Joshua Melody, aka Zomboy, is one of the most highly regarded artists of the modern dubstep era. As one of Never Say Die's true mainstays and OGs, he has emerged as one of the legends of the scene, with a seriously impressive discography spanning over a decade. Writer of one album and multiple game-changing singles, although it's one of his EPs that stands out to many as his most impressive work thus far. A collection of tunes that show Zomboy at potentially his most creative, his music its most exuberant, and undoubtedly the one that put him on the path to enormous success. I am of course talking about his sixth track, September 3rd, 2012 release, The Dead Symphonic. A collection that stands not only as one of the most ambitious and adventurous Zomboy has ever put out, but also that bass music has ever seen. And in this video I'm going to be paying tribute to what is an undeniable classic. The aim of this video will be to provide the context surrounding the release of the EP, before diving deep review style into what makes the project so exceptional in the general modern bass canon. Indeed, what is it that makes it so good? Why does it stand head and shoulders above most other projects of its kind? What kind of legacy has it left? All of this and more will be revealed as we revisit, dissect, and explore Zomboy's The Dead Symphonic. Context is extremely important in realising how the Dead Symphonic came about. Melody was raised in Penzance, Cornwall, a coastal area located in the very southwest of the UK, and his environment was a musical one. He grew up immersed in rock and metal music, working in traditional sound engineering and running his own studio recording bands and artists through his teenage years. Afterwards he moved to Guildford, still south of the UK but more central, where he undertook a music production degree at the Academy of Contemporary Music, or ACM as it's commonly known. It was in the midst of doing this degree, whilst living with lovers of electronic music, that Melody became aware of a little known California based producer by the name of Skrillex, and he was instantly sold. Melody wanted his own piece of the heavy electronic music pie, and began the Zomboy project in 2011. He'd been putting out music under his actual name previously, but settled on the Zomboy moniker whilst playing Left 4 Dead on his Xbox just in time for the release of his debut EP. He'd been advised to change name by Tommy Patice, aka Schism, who was the head of Never Say Die Records and had been shown Melody's music through a friend on Soundcloud. Never Say Die was to be the home for Melody's previously mentioned first collection of tracks entitled Game Time, an EP which included Organ Donor, the track that first put Melody on the map and got many a bass fan locked into his gnarly, energetic dubstep style from the off. However, it did have the distinct feeling of being a debut EP, a foundational collection with the potential for a lot more going forward. Melody himself even commented in an interview with ACM on how he'd pigeonholed himself with the first release, as he'd only just started listening to dubstep. Can we expect more genre spanning from yourself in the future? Definitely. Every track on that first EP was dubstep. Mm. And it was only in this last year where I've kind of really been open to the electronic world and seen what, I, what else I can do. That being said, the production was mostly on point, the musical awareness was there, and the scope for added creativity was clear as Melody went into 2012. Interestingly enough, in the early days Schism had taught Melody to always keep it minimal but interesting when it came to songwriting, and as Zomboy, Melody ran with that approach and then some. It's important to note at this point that Melody had quite a catalogue to his name already before The Dead Symphonic came out. Beyond the Game Time EP and other notable singles like Jam On It, he'd featured on the first official Never Say Die compilation with an original, Cage the Rage, and a remix of Skrillex and Foreign Beggars hit Still Getting It. And there are other big remixes to go with that as well, notably his collaboration edit with Schism of Hadouken's Parasite and a solo take on Hot Right Now by DJ Fresh. Basically, he'd put out quite a bit of music given how recent his signing to Never Say Die was, with his name getting more and more known in the electronic sphere by the day. Moreover, there weren't many others with that kind of approach releasing at the rate that he was, with his production quality increasing significantly with each tune. He was quickly being recognised as one of the most prolific bass artists around. It was a rapid ascension that hit its first major high point with the release of The Dead Symphonic in September 2012. Not only an extremely accomplished multi-genre EP that saw Melody really come into his own on the invention front, but a collection where each of the six cuts represented a serious levelling up on anything he'd put out previously. He'd entered another league. It kicks off with Nuclear, Hands Up, a track that would later be given the VIP treatment in opening up Melody's debut album, and which presents one of the most iconic introductions to a track and EP in modern dubstep history. Come on. Provides the image of the animated zombie character on the EP's artwork parading down an open road and ready to wreak havoc. This is a fantastic opening for the EP because it stands as a kind of announcement of a newly mutated and evolved Zomboy. All the demonic flavour and grit that we come to know him for up to that point, but with the colour and melody amped up like we hadn't heard before. 
The feeling of this opener overall is grand, regal, and statement making. Sonically, it's a brilliant mix of monstrous and jovial, gnarly and bubbly. The growls and belches laced throughout the tune are some of his best ever, and mixed with the uplifting musicality it creates this constant back and forth between good and evil. The 5 minute runtime also gives it a particularly impressive feel. The production is fantastic, with a lot going on yet all sounding so clean in the execution. The main vocal sample is iconic, and the awareness with how it develops and is arranged is expert. And with a drum and bass second drop to go with it. It was practically as good as it could get in introducing the Zomboy project in its shiny new form. The western showdown that is Hoedown follows at track 2, another tune that creates atmosphere very effectively from the off. The drops here are some of the most attacking and full throttle on the EP. It feels to me like a face-off between a zombie and a human as sounds dart inward from any available space possible. It's very combative. And it's arguably the outright darkest tune on the EP, with hardly any lighter moments dropped in compared to other cuts on the collection. It is more than a crying shame that Melody had to remove the Angry Birds sample that comes in just before the first drop, or used to before he took it out, which did provide a bit of glee amidst the darkness we get here. But, you know, copyright gonna copyright. Moving on, we have what is for me the centerpiece of the EP in Vancouver Beatdown. This would be Melody's most impressive foray into Electro House to that point, a style he'd always wanted to play a big part in the Zomboy discography. <laughs> This cut represents most, in my opinion, what the Dead Symphonic is about. For one, you have the Being Creative sample midway through the first drop, a couple of words that speak volumes for the collection overall. The switches in pace from one section of heaviness to another are seamlessly done, with the energy and musicality being on point front to back as well. I'd also say the range of influences outside of bass music are strongest of the six cuts on this tune, from funk to electric guitar and beyond. It is for me a microcosm of the EP, as inventive and free-flowing as bass music gets, which are things I'd say for the EP overall more than pretty much any other ever. City to City at track 4 presents a slight mood change as the prettiest tune on the EP, featuring vocals from Bell Humble and a mostly dreamy instrumental. The heaviness is still as savage and cutting as ever, but merging that with the bliss of the surrounding sections makes for a welcome change at that point. I must admit, this one has never felt quite as coherent as the others on the EP, and is probably my least favourite on the Dead Symphonic. Conceptually at points it feels a bit scattered and unsure of what it wants to do, and Humble's vocal can feel childish and get grating at points without having enough beyond that to lure you in. However, for what it goes for, it is still very well assembled and would pave the way for other lighter leaning tunes from Melody further down the line, miles away for example. The penultimate cut on the EP is Deadweight, which takes us right back down the filthy route. The growls come to the forefront once again in what is undeniably one of the most hectic cuts on the EP. It's another where the placement of every note is so pinpoint and accurate that it feels difficult at times to keep up with everything going on. Most of note to me about this tune, however, is how textured a lot of these sounds are. Here more than any other I feel we can appreciate the perfect levels of saturation and thickness on the main sounds we get. The synths are meaty and juicy to the point they feel like an actual ball of sludge you can squeeze in your hand. Oh and lest I forget the glorious outro of that tune as well, one of the best insights at that point into his melodic prowess as a musician. Another thing that hardly anyone in dubstep at that point, if anyone, was displaying with that kind of quality. And rounding off the EP we have Gorilla March, and if Deadweight before it is frenetic, this cut certainly levels up on that. <laughs> Manic to the point of feeling dizzying, but simultaneously satisfying in the way the D&B snakes through your mind. With the Mumbacore second drop to go with that, following the best transition on the whole EP, there's a lot going on, but absolutely none of it feels out of place. But again, and more so than any other cut here, the thing I want to highlight most is the outro. Melody could have gone for something pretty straightforward, but instead delivered something fittingly triumphant in closing off this track and the EP. Melody commented in the past that the Dead Symphonic has its title because a lot of the songs on the EP have got a really strong orchestral element to them, and that is felt most in this final section. It feels like the ending to a Disney film, the way the strings cascade and glide over each other, and the intense emotion that comes with that. Summing up the hugeness of the collection as it surges towards this delicate final moment, hanging above with the promise of more to come. A beautiful finish to what is quite the rollercoaster track and project overall.
Oh, and an interesting little fact about that ending, the final seconds of it are replicated at the end of Melody's Rock and Roll Part 2 EP with the track Endgame. A nice little bit of continuity when it comes to the Zomboy lore. To talk about the EP more generally though, I struggle to think of another from the modern bass era that is even remotely like it. Is there another EP out there encompassing such a wide range of genres and influences while showing off incredibly inventive ideas and being really well made overall? One could maybe look to Skrillex's Bangarang, another 6 plus tracker with a lot of variety and excitement to it, although whether it's quite as wacky and off the wall with its invention I'm not sure anyone could reasonably believe. For the same reason I wouldn't put Kill Kill Kill, Feed Me's Escape from Electric Mountain, Radical Dude or Blueprint in that creative bracket either. You could potentially look to past EPs from the likes of Knife Party or Dr. P or Barely Alive, but at four tracks they just don't have that stature or longevity presented by the Dead Symphonic. The one that sticks out as a possible contender would be Virtual Riot's German Engineering, but I think we need a few years yet to see how it stands and has aged in bass music overall. Lest we forget the Dead Symphonic has been out almost a decade now, the part it's played can really be felt. Perhaps, and to many, the most adventurous, wide-reaching and ambitious EP this scene has experienced thus far. I can only imagine how fun it must have been to put it together with the amount of wild diversions it takes over its half-hour runtime. A lot happens, but still the songwriting is exceptional, it's incredibly coherent even with so much going on. There's a distinct method to Melody's madness. It was the perfect length of project for him at that point to really strut his stuff and show what he's about, let his creativity run free. The energy of the collection is palpable from start to finish, a pure hype machine that doesn't have a dull moment. There's also a constant dynamic between bright and dark, fun and evil that I don't think has been matched elsewhere in the base EP format and which makes it extremely compelling. As Melody himself put it, his music is dirty electronic mixed with nice melodic break sections and verses, naughty and nice, grimy and pleasant. Beyond that, it's how multifaceted it is, not only in the incorporation of different bass genres but as aforementioned, other musical influences far beyond the electronic realm. Whether it's classical, orchestral, funk, pop or different kinds of guitar, I just think you'd be very hard pressed to find another bass EP as all encompassing as the Dead Symphonic. But what indeed is the EP's legacy? What difference has it made having had that decade of life now? As one of, if not the most creative EP Modern Bass had seen at that point, the Dead Symphonic gave others a license to explore the heights of their own invention in the aftermath of its release. It's interesting to think about which artists pursued the uber inventive bass path as a result of being inspired by the Dead Symphonic. Virtual Riot perhaps, Barely Alive, The Frim, Dr. Ozzy, the list I feel could go on and on. Now you may butt in at this point and say, well, isn't Skrillex most responsible for that as the main catalyst for the modern dubstep explosion? After all, it was he who Zomboy was influenced by most. But I think with the Dead Symphonic, we're talking about another level of creativity that opened up a new scope for what was possible with bass music, and dubstep in particular. Modern dubstep would go on to live through its most generic period on the back of another Zomboy track, Terror Squad, with production becoming more of a priority and ingenuity taking more of a back seat. But when it comes to realising that style in its most creative form, incorporating other genres along the way, it's hard to look past the Dead Symphonic as the biggest influence. For Zomboy in particular, moreover, I think it's hard to argue against the Dead Symphonic being his most creative output to date. Sure, his production got classier and more refined over time, and the storytelling aspect of his songwriting became far more engaging, and these are very important things. But if we're talking about outright excitement, pure uninhibited fun, post the Dead Symphonic, there's nothing that matches it in my opinion. Melody has said in the past that he's big on drawing inspiration from everywhere, and nowhere for me is that clearer than on the Dead Symphonic. Revolutionary not just for dubstep but bass music at large and its propensity to launch from one mood, genre or tempo to another and back with next to no hitches available to the wanting ear. It also lay the foundation for Melody's best years as Zomboy. From here came the global recognition, the sold out headline shows, the game changing singles and collections throughout his discography, not to mention a debut album as well. The Dead Symphonic is not only a thrilling work of art in itself and a huge inspiration for many a bass producer, but also the enabler for the other good we've got from him up to now. For those reasons and everything I've mentioned over the course of this video, there's little to sway me from thinking the Dead Symphonic is Zomboy's most important work to date. A project for the ages that stands as one of the very best modern bass music has seen, the like of which we arguably haven't seen since and may never see again.